All right, getting set up here. I'm going to take a look at this book live. I've got two books, actually. And I'm going to open these up and take a look through them and talk about a giveaway. So if you're into photo books, I have... Uh, three books here that I'm going to be doing a giveaway for um, over the coming weeks. I don't know. I'll probably run it for a week, maybe 10 days or something. Um, I've got five copies of each of these books that I'm giving away um, from the publisher, Thames and Hudson. And um, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited to check these out. I haven't really looked at them yet. I thought I'd kind of unwrap them and take a quick look, get some impressions on these books um so yeah i've been doing a partnership with the publisher and they um sent me these books so these are my books i'm excited to start getting more photo books i hadn't gotten any and it screws everything up <laughs> all right so photo books i think i'm going to start with this streetwise one i'm really interested to see i had gotten this one from the library before and it was pretty cool i didn't have a lot of time to look through it but um yeah, so uh, before I get started, where you can be a part of the giveaway, here's the spots. Um, here on TikTok, I'll do a post uh, probably later today or tomorrow announcing the giveaway. Um, I'm doing uh, my YouTube channel, link in bio. Instagram, also linked in bio. I'm going to do one on Twitter. Um, Twitter is... The same name is here, Zach Dobson Photo. And I'm going to do one through um, my email list. There's a link in my bio to sign up for the email list. So if you really want to have the most chances to uh, win a book, again, I have five copies of each of these books, one for each channel. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and my email list. So you really want to win, you can um, enter each of those. I, I don't have the post up yet. I will be doing that within the next, like, I don't know, let's say 12 hours. Maybe even tonight. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So what I want to start with, I'm happy to do like a Q&A. Well, I do this stuff, talk about other photography-related things. I'm really interested to see what's in here because I haven't seen this one at all yet. I haven't opened the wrapping or anything, that other big one I'd gotten from the library. But I, um, so I went to college for photojournalism. I didn't bring anything to open this up with. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I went to college for photojournalism, so I've always been really huge into the Magnum photographers. When I was in school, for some reason, you know, I liked the photo books, and I'd look at them in the library, but the ones that I liked were really expensive at the time. Uh, there was um, James Noctway's Inferno. It was this massive book. The Inferno book's probably like this big. It's just unbelievable. It was like $150. I'm like, there's no way I can get this book. Um, and uh, Sebastio Salgado's book, I'm pretty sure it was called Migrations. And that one was kind of expensive too, so I kind of just wrote off ever getting photo books. Only recently, since I've come to um, look at these, been doing these must-know photographers. I've been learning a lot more about the history of, of photography, documentary, street art, all kinds of photography. Um, I want photo books now. I want a whole room full of photo books. There's so much more in these books than you can find online. It's amazing to me because I research a lot of photographers and you know, even the biggest photographers, I might find like a few dozen different images that are easy to find and access. And anytime I've picked up a photo book, I'm, there's just hundreds more images. And I always find so much more that I've never seen before. So, all right. I want to hear, I'm going to try to get this sound on the mic here. I've got my earbuds. Because you got to love that, you know, like opening the new book for the first time. Tell me if you can hear it. Okay, not really. The other book I opened <laughs> made this really cool sound. This one, not so much. So just an initial impression. 
it looks like it's um, categorized by photographers. Okay. Um, if you're not, oh yeah. Uh, I forgot about this picture. Oh man, that's such a good picture. God damn it. It makes me angry. Not really. You know what I mean? Bonsoir to you as well. Thanks for stopping by. We're looking at some uh, photo books here. I've seen this picture. Who took that picture? I should know this. Oh, this is a mix. It's not one photographer. Okay, who took... Oh, yes, uh, Hepker, Thomas Hepker, the, the German photographer, took this photo. I did um, a post a couple months ago on his series of images from... Um, from uh, mer of marine recruits. Really intense, excellent photography. And I remembered, I'm going to, uh, I've seen a, a number of images lately of the Twin Towers or September 11th. I'm going to have a whole series. I'm going to do a whole post on some of the images like this and other ones that probably not a lot of people, I know, me too. It's beautiful. Um, 1983. So this is just an initial impression. Uh, if you're not familiar with Magnum, oh man, wow. It's beautiful. Incredible. I, I don't think, I've never seen this picture before. <laughs> no, it's all good. That's what this is here for, Dennis. Just hang out. You don't have to say anything. Just look at the pictures with me. Um, so this book is Streetwise, the ultimate collection of street photography. This is one of the books I'm going to be giving away. If you follow all my social channels, I'm giving one away on each channel. So I don't have the official posts up to enter yet. Maybe I should have um, put those up before I did the live. But, you know, we're all learning here and just doing our best um so yeah let's take a look i don't know how this is categorized this uh this picture is really um uh, fraught for me personally because if you don't know this is the photographer david allen harvey and um it's a just it's such a beautiful photo, but um, it came to light probably last year. A big article ran on him that he is uh, extremely problematic to young women. So it's kind of like it gives a whole new thing to this photo because it's such a beautiful image. But uh, personally, I have a hard time when I know somebody is, you know, not a good person than enjoying their art. It kind of... For me, you know, I, I, I don't really separate the two. The art is separate from the artist. But if I'm looking at the art and it makes me think of the artist and it ruins it for me, then, <laughs> then that's a problem that I have. Um, well, let's look at the beginning and see how this is laid out. Um, I'm happy to talk about whatever, answer other questions. Um, if you don't know about Magnum, Magnum's a collective of photographers that was started back in 1947, primarily by uh, Robert Kappa and um, who else? Uh, Cartier Bresson, uh, and I'm blanking on the other people's names. So their whole thing was we have this very specialized skill set doing documentary photography. They'd all photograph the war. Uh, David Chim Seymour was one of them. They were. They had all photographed the war. They had this very specialized set of skills of being documentary photographers. And a lot of the publishers at the time were trying to take rights away from photographers and own the copyrights. And they said, you know what? We spend usually months putting these stories together. And um, here's Cartier Brisson in one of his pictures. And um, it's very expensive for us to do, to take on all the costs of travel and um, all this time that it takes. And so we need to keep our copyright. 
because if they sold their image, if they sold a photo to Life Magazine, this is another picture I love. It's such a good picture. It's really small here, but there's so much to see in it. Yeah, art and artist. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's it's hard, you know, when you find out these things about people. It, it's just, I think about it, you know, I think about it. And um, it kind of messes it up for me. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, if they sold a photo to Life Magazine and Life Magazine owned the copyright, then that meant um, they couldn't sell the photo to anyone else. But if they kept the copyright, they could sell it to Life Magazine. They could sell it to someone in Paris. They could sell it to someone in London and in Germany and all over the world. So it helped them to recoup their costs and to also fund future projects. This is a cool photo too. I don't, I'm not amazing with um, pronunciations. Harry Gruyere. I don't know if you say it the same as like Gruyere. Gruyere. I don't know his um, country of origin. I've, I've seen his name before. I have to specifically, when I make a video about a specific photographer, I always look up how to pronounce their names. So <laughs> on live, it's different because I'm, I, I'm a lot of times, you know, seeing things that I didn't seen before. Okay, so I'm going to look at the organization. They've got in transit, days off. I don't know what that means. Playing the markets, how they shot, New York, London, Paris, Tokyo, and then a photographer directory. Oh, but within these sections, it looks like that's kind of confusing is my initial thought. Within these sections, they have, it looks like more um, portfolios by photographers. So, um, you know, how they shot. Maybe it's just like a subsection. Let's find out. So... The name I'll flip back Magnum Streetwise. If you're just, uh, oh, sorry, hold on. I have to uh, take a hey, is Lou out there? What? You can go to Cal's if you want. Can you tell Henry, please? I know, but can you find him and tell him I'm doing a live? trying to parent and do a live at the same time. Uh, well, with the music thing, I know. It's, oh, I've got the sun creeping in here. I'm probably going to have to move. Anyways, yeah, Gruyere. Print, print, okay, I'm trying. Like, um, I just heard, I'd seen the name before, but I just heard the pronunciation. Sorry, I probably cut out there. Let me see if I can get back. I'm slowed down here. Let's, uh, oh yeah, here you go. You can't get these to stay open. All right, trying to live. Hey Zach, how you doing? I couldn't get this book to stay open. So, I am, okay, I'm going to flip back to here for just a second while I reintroduce what I'm doing here. I've got a lot, um, I've got this book and two other books that I'm working with the publisher, Thames and Hudson. They are, um, and uh, I'm giving away five copies of each of these three books that I have. Sorry, I'm I'm trying to deal with uh um parenting and doing that. No, I have not looked at I haven't looked at the Magnum Contact sheet book yet, but yes, I would love to. I love looking at the contact sheets. I it, okay, so there's so much of this stuff that I wouldn't have known. I'd be interested. I wasn't interested when I was a student, but now I'm like, I'm all about it. I want to look at all the photo books. I want to see all the contact sheets. I want to do all of it. 
I just realized that the sun is coming my direction, so I'm going to move over. I've got a skylight here where I'm at. So, don't need to be in the direct sun. All right, that's better. All right, so here's the deal. Let me show you the other books I've got here. I'm doing... Can you tell me real quick? I'm doing a lot of... Uh, go ask mom. She's at the Coopers. Don't... All right, so just a quick thing, quick reintroduction here. These are the three books I'm giving away. Um, I have five of each to give away from the publisher. They're all going to be brand new, unopened. Not these demo books. These are my copies. You can't have them. Uh, um, tick, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and my newsletter. Um, all of those things you can get to through the links in my bios, the more places you're signed up for. The newsletter one will just probably go to anybody who's on the newsletter as an entry. The other ones I'll be putting posts up that you can like the posts. And um, uh, it'll, it'll probably be like like and comment on the posts for an entry. So keep an eye out for that in the next day or so. I'll probably go live again too. So this book is massive. I got this one from the library before I connected with the publisher, and it's pretty cool, but I haven't gotten through to that yet. I hadn't seen this one yet, so this is the one I wanted to look at first. Um, I, I really, you know, I only took one history of photography class in college, which I hardly remember. Maybe you want my copy. Yeah, maybe I'll sell that for like a bonus. Oh shit, whoa, yes. Look at that. Okay, here's the biggest reason I found that I'm becoming obsessed with photo books. I did a must-know photographer on Raghu Rai, and I looked through so many of his pictures, and I never saw this. I absolutely would have included this photo in his video, but I never saw it. And there's so much stuff. Yeah, I take the class. Yeah, exactly. Now, now I could. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks, Dennis. I appreciate that. I've, and there's another, I'm going to give a shout out to another account that I started following recently and liked a lot. Um, oh shit, I'm going to say the name wrong. Danny's photo book corner, I think is what the full name of the thing. Danny's photo books, I know is for sure, but I think it's called Danny's photo book corner. He goes through um, the photo books and he'll talk about the images. He talks very, um, he, you know, his insights are very good about the images, but a big thing I noticed through seeing his photo book channel is how many images I've seen that I never saw before in books. There's so much more in books. That's, you get so used to thinking everything's online. But with photography, there's a lot that's not online. And um, it's really incredible to go deep on some of these things. I had um, Stephen Shore's Uncommon places from the library and that's definitely one I'll be buying you know it's interesting you start to see like how many people have emulated some of these photographers this is this is a beautiful shot I love that detail of the guy with his glasses right on the edge of the frame great shot love that Eli Reed Montgomery, Alabama, 1995. Cool stuff. So Magnum just started a TikTok. Uh, so Magnum has a channel now. If you go and follow Magnum, tell them, tell them that I, I told you about them. <laughs> and then get on their radar. Um, this is a beautiful shot. Okay, Christopher Anderson. Yeah. Christopher Anderson, I felt like, wasn't he in Seven before? Or see, I don't know. Am I thinking of somebody else? If anybody knows, let me know. It's a beautiful image. Very classic. I mean, this feels like it could be older. It really does. Um, yeah, Zach, make a photo book for sure. I've made a couple uh, self-published ones, and it's really... Um, 
it's really a lot of fun and you don't have to do it in any certain way. I'm going to do a post on making zines at some point. Um, and most of my message is going to be just, uh, you know, do it your way, whatever strikes you as being, um, you know, interesting. This book uh, is a review Magnum Streetwise. I'm going to be giving these away across all of my uh, social channels, one copy per channel. So I've got five copies of this book to give away. That's cool. Yeah, Christopher Anderson. Remember since 2004. Who am I? Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. So I don't. I haven't quite figured out how all these sections in these books work. I love the um, minimalism of the color here. I mean, you basically got three colors. Very cool detail. It's the kind of stuff that I love. It's just like the everyday. Okay, this is a photographer I'm not familiar with. Olivia Arthur. It's interesting. Double exposures. Looks like all different types of things. Dubai World Cup. It's nice being able to see a lot of photographers presented to have a book that has a lot of different photographers and then also more than one image per photographer. I have an old book that I got when I graduated high school in 2000 that has a lot of different photographers, but there's only one photo per photographer. And some of them are some of my favorite photographers. They did not pick any of my top photos for So I might've just kind of ignored their pages. Um, Bruno, Barbie. It's cool. There's a, so there's a lot of newer photographers in this book. Um, I mean, by newer, I don't mean, you know what I mean, uh, compared to who we think of for Magnum, like Cartier-Bresson and Kappa and all those guys who were, and women, they have been pretty good about always having, you know, women as members um, from, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s by newer photographers. I mean, these are people who are still out working today, but a lot of these people are probably, you know, in like their 40s and 50s. Norwegian photographer Jonas Bendixson. I've heard of him. I haven't been familiar with his work. That's cool. A lot going on there. Yeah, to put work on something that isn't social. I completely agree with that sentiment, Zach. I, I, I always like to print my stuff too whenever I can. I've really enjoyed making the zines, and they're more both more affordable to produce and to sell. Um, so I've liked that about them. The books are cool, but a hardbound book, if you're just buying a handful are really expensive. Um, you have to order like a huge quantity to get down to like five or $10 a book. Um, I, for an intro medium format camera, I've heard good things about the Fuji line of medium format, the GFX. I like Fuji's stuff. I mean, I check, I haven't used it. I'm trying to get them to send me one to try out. Um, I wanted to say too, Zach with the book thing that when I was listening to an interview with Lee Friedlander um, that's on YouTube it's with it's five years old it is uh, what did he say so I think a lot of people feel like they need to come up with the book first and then go out and shoot a book but Lee Friedlander who's made something like 83 books says that he starts with the photos he just shoots and shoots and looks through his images and then he's like if I've got three photos of something then I'm like well I can make a book out of that <laughs> and he'll 
shoot more along those topics or just look for more on that theme. But it starts with the photos as opposed to the book, Days Off. So what is this? Just leisure kind of photos? That's interesting. The color on that is great. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a game called Guess What Year. Uh, let's see. It's got to be fairly recent. Um, it looks like it's probably in you know, like Eastern Europe or something. I'm going to guess like 2000, you're going to say 2004. I was going to say a little, I'm going to say like 2010. I'm going to say 2010. Let's find out. Um, which page is it on? Oh, come on. Don't make this hard on me. It should be like previous page. Okay. This is page 86. So I'm looking for 8045. 8045, Jonas Bendixson. Oh, 2005. is was uh, Georgia, the Black Sea. So I was right about that, but uh, Tony Collette, Soprano. <laughs> you win, you win the, the year on that one. Uh, Martine Franck. Uh, 2004. So she was shooting for a long time. I don't, I don't think she's still alive. I think she, I can't remember. She was married to Cartier Brisson and he was significant. He was like 20, I think 20 years or so older than she was. So I don't know, maybe she, maybe she is. So this here is a mix of some photographers. These are interesting kind of moody photos. That's cool. With this minimalism. I wonder where. Let's find out about this photo. This is Renee Burry, Copacabana Beach, Rio, 1958. Okay. It's interesting how the time kind of, with this book, you're moving in and out of time so often. When you're flipping through certain photographers, you know, you're, you're within their lifetime, obviously, but when you have these broader categories like leisure, you know, you've got this mix here, 1958 and 2012. This is cool. I feel like I've seen this before today. I saw this one I flipped through recently. I feel like I know who this photographer is. Let's find out. Wait, what? No. Stuart Franklin, Manchester, England, 1986. I did not know who that photographer was. It's interesting. Oh, here. Alex Soth. He is on TikTok now. He just signed up. Go follow Alex Soth, too. He's... Um, I think I, I like what he's starting to do there, having a dialogue around photography. I like when people do that. I, I, I like when people want to talk and interact and participate in the way that the platform is laid out as opposed to like coming in and trying to make it. Like there's this photographer, I don't know, I can't remember his name, some celebrity photographer. He has like 600,000 followers, but he follows zero people. And uh, zero... So all he's doing is like recycling like his videos from YouTube or something. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to follow this. I want to interact with people who are like participating in the platform. Here's Soth again. Um, so I'm producing a book through Amazon publishing service. I don't know. I haven't looked into that at all. It'd be interesting. Oh, awesome. That's cool. I think TikTok must have known you were looking at this book. <laughs> they sent you here. I haven't looked in the Amazon publishing service. My books I've printed are mostly through Blurb. And um, Blurb uh, can sell your stuff through Amazon. So, I, I mean, I, I signed up for that, but I don't know that I've s sold any through Amazon directly. So I have my golf, lost golf ball book is on Amazon. These are nice. It's nice to, you know, uh, have this 
all in one place. Oh, thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. My zine I did with um, Blurb. They have a real good quality magazine. It's, it's, it's very reasonably priced. If I got to a large enough quantity, I could probably get them for really cheap. But, you know, uh, maybe after I've published a few. I've got my edition number two for sale until the end of May. And then that'll go to print at the, the first week of June. And then I'll release. I'm, I think I'm going to do it quarterly. I've really enjoyed it. Um, we looked at this one earlier. Anyone knew? This was um, Thomas Hepker, um, 1983. It's like hard to imagine. That's what I love about these is that you, this is great photography takes you there. Like I never have or w will probably ever experience a place like this exactly. I mean, probably because, you know, it doesn't obviously exist like this anymore 39 years later but um to really like be in that spot and experience it i feel like i've seen okay cartier brisson so now we're on to all cartier brisson maybe because i'm distracted a little bit talking it's hard for me to figure out exactly how this book is laid out because they have certain themes like you know you're looking at new york or you're looking at transit or leisure which is a mix of photographers and then they have these sections of all of one photographer. Some of these are not images that I was very familiar with. Bruce Davidson does great work. Uh, I, I was going to make a video. Yeah, the color. This it does. It does have really good color in here. I was going to make a video on Davidson's portrait of the um, circus clown, the um, little person. Um, I, I'm sorry, his name is escaping me at the moment. I knew his name. But then I read some of the quotes of Davidson surrounding that, and they felt a little problematic. So I'm like, I don't know that I want to get into that. This is a beautiful photo. See another one I haven't seen. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to pick a year based on the car. I'm going to say 1964 1966 LA. Ah, this color is so good. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Oh, Chicago. I'm able to like follow back pretty much everybody and also their messaging lets people send me messages if i'm not already following them carl de kaiser i'm not familiar with this photographer it's interesting pyongyang huh oh, these are all in Pyongyang, that's interesting. That, so much in this one. This is cool. I love photos with this level of like depth where you can just really get in and examine. I mean, you've got the detail of the tram car that he's in and the so much detail in the landscape and you even get the people in the other car there. Very interesting. Ooh, great color there. Man. One thing I love about documentary photographers and magnum photographers is that I know based on their skill level and um, their documentary standards that this is what the scene looked like. You know, they're not messing with the colors. They're not oversaturating. They're not you know, uh, messing with the skies or, or making anything, you know, overly like hyper reality or anything like that. Um, that's what I love. I love seeing photos that represent 
the actual, you know, like time and place. Um, I want it. I want to see what it would look like if I was there, you know. Raymond de Pardon. I'm not familiar with this photographer. 80s New York. This is cool. This is something I'm going to do. I'm th thinking about how I want to make the post, but I want to talk more about what I call like making your photos 3D by having something or someone really up close in the foreground. And it gives that more of that effect like you're standing there. I think that's one thing I see commonly that a lot of people don't have in their photos is that kind of like 3D, especially with street photography. I feel like a lot of people tend to, s now it's one thing if it's stylistic, I get it. Some people like more like, you know, 2D graphic uh, uh, kind of street photography. But what I like to see is like up close. And it's my, again, personal preference, but it's one thing if you're doing it intentionally, it's another if you're just feeling a little too nervous to get up close to people. Nikos Economopoulos. One cannot hide from one's own camera, says Nikos Economopoulos. It's interesting. Lots of nice color here in this work. Yeah, I like this one. Great, right there, great stuff. Elliot Erwitt. Elliot Erwitt. So nice. 1979. <laughs> That's nice. Lost persons area. Let's take a little bit closer look. That sleeping baby is like almost like planking. <laughs> yeah. These are nice. I mean, these compositions look really, uh, I mean, the, and the light and everything. I mean, it's 1950. It feels really like more of a modern, you know, style. Very cool. I'm not like super high on battery here. So I either got to run and get a cord or um, be done soon. Is there one photographer that is your favorite has influenced the most? You know, honestly, it changes so much. Um, when I was a student, my favorite photographers were James Noctway and um, Sebastio Salgado. I was more heavy on the journalism side. I'm Now I like kind of the mix of like, that's why I like the street photographer so much because it's a mix of like documenting the world combined with art. Um, so I love everything from like um, Graciela Iturbide is one of my favorite photographers. Her stuff has this almost kind of like mystical uh, feel to it. She's a Mexican photographer and she, you know, documents a lot of the uh, indigenous people and the different communities. Um, her work's very beautiful. I also like Lee Friedlander. I just did a must-know photographer on. He's one of my favorites. Um, uh, Eggleston. I didn't appreciate Eggleston when I was like like a college student, but now I really do. I really like his eye for the beauty and the everyday. And Stephen Shore, I really really gained a lot of appreciation from for Stephen Shore by looking at his book Uncommon Places because the pictures are so big I mean he basically he's shooting those photos in medium sorry uh large format and then basically printing like a contact sheet of the negative so the prints on the books are like the size of the negatives in that book and there's so much detail it's wild I mean the Tennesseans archives oh that sounds intriguing for sure. That's nice. I love when people get like a good, I mean, you just get the lighting so nice. Very cool.
yeah. I can imagine taking this shot and being like so excited about it. Like that feeling of like when you get kind of a unique lighting situation and you get it to work in your favor. favor. Wait, so who am I looking at? Is this a mix again? What are these foot section? Playing the markets. That's cool with the, what are those, the yellow fin? Or blue fin, I don't know, the giant tuna. <laughs> In 70s, that's interesting. Patrick Zachman, Martin Parr, Martin Parr, the other three are Martin Parr. Bruno Barbie. Inga Morath, that's interesting. I did a post on Inga Morath a few months back. I love her work. I hadn't seen her more modern work. This is 1998. I can't remember what year she passed. I think maybe it was like the really early 2000s. At least probably the first decade of the 2000s. Yeah, because she was a young person during World War II, so she was probably born in the mid-20s. So she would have been like 70-something taking this. This is Alex Webb, right? Yeah, Alex Webb. Always great color with Webb. interesting again the, that man getting close getting close right here i'm like i gotta get closer in my pictures gotta get closer how they shot london oh yeah wait wait i know who this is oh, i just saw that picture i'm trying to see if i can remember who who it is without this is it's fun when there's so many photographers in the book because i can try to guess whose work it is or um Oh, that's the South American photographer, Argentinian. Uh, oh, I'm blanking. I know who that is. All right, I'm going to look. Sergio Lorraine? Sergio Lorraine. All right, there we go. See, I'm getting to know people here. Sergio Lorraine was an interesting character. I haven't done a must-know photographer on him yet, but he came from a very wealthy family in Argentina. And, I mean, like, massively wealthy. And so he got into photography, and he would travel around, and he was very, like, anti his family's wealth. And he ended up just, like, uh, going to a mountain village. He kind of discovered, like, um, I'm not sure what the thing what 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 it type of meditation or spiritual practice i can't remember off the top of my head but basically just lived at like a mountain retreat uh oh no he's chilean my bad uh right damn i'm sorry i'm forgetting now i think he's chilean not argentinian so yeah, that's the, oh, this is Inga Morath, yeah. yeah. She had, so it's interesting because everybody talks about how William Eggleston and Stephen Shore were like really the first ones to be like, uh, do color photography that was like welcomed into the art world, if you know what I mean, like, it was kind of first, like, accepted. Well, not everybody accepted it right away. But um, people talk about color photography gaining acceptance with Eggleston and Shore in the 70s. But there are a lot of photographers who were shooting color before then. Inga Morath shot some color. Helen Levitt. Helen Levitt shot a lot of color. Um, Saul Leiter was shooting color but he didn't he wasn't showing it to anybody he was shooting color in the late 50s through the early 60s and a lot of people didn't see that until the first time it was published in a book and his well a book of it was um 
19, no, no, 2005. So a lot of people didn't see his color photography broadly until the book came out in 2005. In fact, the photo book I have from the year 2000 didn't even have Saul Leiter in it at all uh, uh, out of like 200 plus photographers. And um, he's one of my favorites. This is the kind of stuff when you like this framing here, you're like, okay, yeah, here's a good, here's a great photographer. It's almost like comforting in a way when you start to um, see these people who are so good and have so much attention to detail in all of the frame. I wonder who that is. Ian Barry. I don't know. I'm not familiar. That light, the quality of light in this one is really interesting. Is that Trent Park? London, 2006. I love when you're out shooting and you get the reflections off another building. It's especially interesting because these are such old, old buildings, obviously. But you can tell that that reflection is coming off of like a modern building because of how much glass obviously is there. And the tone of it, the warmth, you know, it's probably one of those like golden, you know, uh, tinted window buildings. So, yeah, cool, cool stuff. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Gilden. I, I, Bruce Gilden is interesting to me because while I don't necessarily appreciate his flashbang street approach, where he's literally, you know, a foot away from people flashing right in their faces. Uh, he has so much work. He only really does that in New York. And when you see his work from other places like um, Haiti or even like New Orleans, uh, it's more... Um, subtle it's like he when he's in new york he's in he's a new i mean he's born born and raised new yorker his whole life um it's like he's among his own people so he feels okay doing that but then when he's out in the other places you know he like it feels like he's being more sensitive to the culture see here's haiti you know he's still close but a lot of times he's not using that flash. I honestly, I'm not great at telling if he is right there or not. I wish I could see some of the other photos um, that he had done in some of the other places. Harry Gruyere. Gruyere. Again, here's more color. What year? Oh, yeah, wow. Look at those colors, man. This is, this is, I mean, yeah, the good stuff. When you get color on a person and in the scene, like, and then back here, the same colors, that's great. That's when you can't, it's, those are the type of things that I think people maybe could learn more about photography is that while obviously you couldn't have, planned anything like that it's just that noticing and i don't think you even necessarily notice it in the moment it just feels right and then you're like you've got this color here down here this window even this back here is a similar shade of like a you know light green blue and you almost have it up here too that's it's great when the when that comes together you can see that nice color so Let's see, this is 220. So that's 1983. Again, 1983, Ireland. It's interesting. Not necessarily. I, um, I might see if I can grab a cord to plug in. So take in this photo here for a moment. I'm going to see if I can find a cord.
All right, I'm back. I found the cord. I'm gonna plug it in. I might have to move my location a little bit here. I'm not gonna be talking on the headset now, so I hope the sound is still okay. Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me here while I move. All right, I got power. And let's move this over. All right, that's pretty good, okay. We can keep going a little longer. I've got probably another like 10 or 15 minutes, most likely. I wanted to say some stuff about this photo because it's so amazing. Uh, let me know you can hear me okay. The sound's gonna be a little bit different. I wanna, t I, I wanna talk, uh, generally speaking, make, I'll make some posts about this and stuff, about like, I sound the same. Okay, so I don't even need to use the headset at all. Thanks. Thanks, folks. I think people look at a photo like this and they think, shit, man, this is so complex. Like, I couldn't do that. And it's really all about just learning the building blocks of what makes a good photo. You know, you've got the leading lines of these lights. You've got the, like, frame. The doorway is a frame. You got, you know, the window here is more leading lights. You've got the, you know, the directionality of the people. Um, a lot of geometry. You know, you've got more line. You've got the geometry here. The reflection, you know, adding that in there gives you so much more depth. Like that makes so much of the picture having this additional, you know, lines moving through. This line, you know, is a diagonal that draws your eye back towards the central part of the photo. I mean, all of these things do. And you can't expect to like, <laughs> you can't expect to know all these things or be able to do all this in one photo when you first start right off the bat. And so just learning each, thanks for the likes, I appreciate it. Learning each thing along the way, learning framing, you know, frame within a frame learning and looking for the leading lines, looking to the frame edges um, to add more context to the photo. Um, I love the detail. You can really sit with this. You can see there, these are, um, I can't tell if they're albums or t-shirts. I think they're albums, ACDC, The Jam. I can't tell who the other ones are. Is that the Ramones down at the bottom? I can't tell. But, um, you know, not to feel intimidated by something like this. It's just something that comes over time and it becomes instinctual. I guarantee they weren't thinking all of those things when they took the picture. They could just, you, you feel it. Maybe you saw, okay, the frame and you saw the reflection. And, but like leading lines become like, yeah, attention to detail. The leading lines become instinctual and you don't have to think about it so much. And all of these things, you know, a newer photographer is going to see this moment like that, probably, you know, something tight. You're noticing the, the car. But I like to try to tell people to like step back. So much of there's so much here by stepping back. Great moment. You add to it by letting the background play out, having conversations, these little pops of red in there. And you really let the car like draw your your eye through the picture, there's a lot here. And I think anybody's capable of learning a lot of these things. I'm gonna skip over David Allen Harvey because uh, if you weren't here in the beginning, I was mentioning how he's, uh, <laughs> a lot has come out about him in the last year being, um, yeah, exactly, you can always crop in and I, to me, I feel like whatever you need to do to get a great picture, I'm all for cropping. Some of the purists, traditionalists, I heard that Cartier-Bresson was really against cropping. But I'm like, whatever, who cares, man? You know, sometimes you see a picture and you're not in the, the spot you want to be and you got to take it before you can, you know, move or do anything else. So get the picture and worry about that later, in my opinion. A local portrait photographer on the beach. Heron Bay, England, 1963. That's cool. 
David Hearn. <laughs> it's a great moment. These are this is interesting. I've I've never been to um the UK. But from the pictures that I've seen this feels very like UK. This is Wales. Uh the the beaches are so it seem like they just go on. It always seems to be a lot of like, you know, often foggy coated or uncoated paper. Well, that's a good question. You be the judge. I guess it's probably coded. I'd have to look at the specs for the book to really see. I'm not an expert on the printing methods and techniques myself. I'm still learning about. I would guess it's probably has some kind of coding to it. Um, it has a slight, very, it's not super shiny. It's just got a little bit of like a, a little bit. There you go. Thanks. Thanks for that education on paper there. The coated, what are the benefits? I would assume it resists like, you know, leaving fingerprints or smudges. Semi-gloss, there you go. I wanted to get back to old, the old, where you said the old guys think it shows poor prep equipment usage and choosing the wrong lens. I'm sure you're right about that. But also it's interesting because most of them, you know, uh, you didn't account for, uh, hey, thanks for uh, joining from the UK. Appreciate you, friend. There's only so much you can be ready to do. I mean, when I shoot for client work, I'm shooting two cameras and lenses, usually like a 24 and a 50 or a 24 and a 70 to 200. And it's like, yeah, okay, then I'm pretty prepared for whatever happens. But if I'm going out just by myself, that's interesting. If I'm going out with my, you know, little Fuji camera to just take some, some, you know, low key kind of stuff. Typically, I just have my. Well, it's a thirty-five millimeter equivalent, um, and it's like, well, you know, I can't always get closer before the thing happens and moves away. Yeah, no joke. Okay. Yeah. No, I think some people get a little too, especially the older men, photographers um, of this kind of generation, mid 20th century, you know, they tend to be like perfectionists, purists, and they were afforded that time. You know, somebody like Cartier-Bresson could be a perfectionist because, you know, again, another person from a wealthy family, he didn't have to worry so much about the money. And I think it was Inga Morath who was saying she would get the cast off assignments when she first joined Magnum because some of those guys could afford to say, no, I don't want to do that assignment because they didn't need every photo shoot that came through. Whereas some of them did, especially the women needed to take all of the photo shoots. Um, I'm blanking on another name. I'm trying to remember. Um, gosh, darn it. Uh, one of the women photographers that I profiled for must know photographers, it'll come back to me. She said, like, I was a working photographer. Like, I didn't have time to, like, sit in the cafes like the men and just talk about the theory of photography. Like, I had to, I had to work. Yeah, everyone's rich now. Sergio Lorraine. Okay, wait. Let me go back to the beginning of his real quick. He was Chilean, right? Yeah, Chilean. So he was so amazing, and he took so many pictures, and then he just, like, stopped. He just quit taking photos, uh, I think, like, in the late 60s or something. He worked professionally for no more than 10 years during the 50s and 60s. There were a couple photos of his that he did in like the 90s, I think, but he mostly um, stopped doing photography and was just, you know, in a mountain village 
uh, meditating all day. Ooh, I gotta find a way to do books. She, De- Jesse Tarbox Beals, definitely would have been one of those people that always had to work. I, uh, I can picture her photo, uh, the video. It was a picture of somebody running off in the distance and it was strongly backlit with the shadows like coming towards you. And so I could, I could look it up except I'm, I'm presenting on my phone here. Oh, I might have my list. Hold on, I, had, I can access my, so I try to keep a list of all the photographers I want to talk about and all the ones that I have talked about. And so I should have her on my list. Okay. Oh, Sabine Weiss. That's who it was. Um, Sabine Weiss or Weiss if you don't pronounce it that way. Um, she was the one who said that. Yeah. Um, I was like, if her name starts with an S, I couldn't quite bring it to the front of my mind. But, um, you know, somebody was asking me, I, I feel like after almost, must, almost every must-know photographer I do then becomes like my favorite photographer for a time. So I just did Lee Friedlander. I love Lee Friedlander. I've really been into the um, Mexican photographers so much. Um, I mentioned... Um, Oh, my brain, it's that time of day. I mentioned um, Graciela Iturbide. She's one of my all-time favorites. I love the work of Flor Garduño, Lola Alvarez Bravo, um, and all of them were, uh, worked, or uh, in some capacity, learned some from Manuel Alvarez Bravo. Um, so he had an influence I mean, you know, an, an influence in like some of them kind of took notes from his approach or his technique or his attention to detail. But all of the, the women who worked with him had their own, you know, style separate from him. They just all happened to, you know, um, do some spend some time working with him, whether like in the field or as a dark room assistant. Herbert List is interesting too. He was a German photographer. Mark Rabaud. I don't, and I'm not always 100%. This feels like two images, but this is not two images. No, I had to look at it twice to make sure this wasn't two images. And that's excellent. Excellent composition. 1953, I wouldn't have even known they had escalators in 1953. Is that weird? Why do I feel like an escalator is a more modern invention than 1953? Oh, look at that red. Yeah, nice, that's nice. So Herbert List is interesting because I don't know if they really mention about him being gay, but clearly he was like a very early, you know, gay photographer because he photographed um, a lot of the pictures of young men that he took. Of course, like, are they not going to show those in here? Uh, That'd be an interesting choice. No. Okay. I mean, I think it's worth talking about that someone was like, uh... so what if we are all photographers? We are not taking the same images. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, you know, my, if you follow me and you see my videos, you know that I talk. Okay, I'm going to go back to Herbert List in a second here. But I wanted to say, too, if you've follow me and see my videos, you know, I like to be very inclusive about photography. I want it to be approachable for people. I want people to learn about great photography and I want people to practice photography and get involved, whether 
you know, they think they're good at it or not. I think it should be fun and interesting and engaging. And I think by doing it, you learn to appreciate it more. Like one of the reasons I appreciate like jazz music so much is because I was a musician growing up and played a lot of different instruments and really gained an appreciation for the level of complexity. And I'm not a good musician, I'm just average. But because of that education, I know because of the, that education, I have more of an appreciation for music. And I think it's the same with photography. Not a lot of people are gonna be like amazing, great photographers by the context of you know history and art standards. But I think everyone can learn to take photos that they like and that document their life and that can, um, you know, pass down for generations of their family to have a nice historical document of a time and place that their families can keep. And I think that's more important than being a quote unquote, you know, like important artist. So, um, you know, not everybody's going to get into photography or be able to be as good as like these Magnum photographers, but I think that uh, it's important to, um, it's good to get that education, you know, and have something to be inspired by and um, all of that. But I think it's interesting because I think it's worth talking about uh, with Herbert List that he was a gay photographer. You know, that was one of the reasons why he left, you know, he was in Germany being German. I think he was... I had read somewhere about him, there was some concern about him being persecuted because he would, was living basically openly gay. And um, the photos that he took of, I think he spent most of the, his time during World War II in Spain. And um, he spent a lot of his time in Spain and photographing like, you know, young men and, um, you know, talking about early like LGBTQ photographers, you know, we're coming up, I know June is pride month and I'm going to feature some photographers like list and, um, uh, Mapplethorpe and, uh, some of those other people, um, and honestly, I need to look for, to, to keep it balanced. I mean, need to make sure I'm looking for some women. Um, I'm curious about who some of the early, um, you know, LGBTQ women photographers were. I have more research to do on that. Oh, thanks. Gayforpay.ca. Yeah, I'm excited. This is a beautiful image too. I'm excited. You know, I try to make this my channel as inclusive as I can. And with the must know photographers, really at the suggestion of my wife to give her credit where credit's due was like, you really need to like alternate men and women each time you do one of these. So, um, and I don't have a way that I, and I've, I've, I try to focus on photographers out to be equally as inclusive to photographers outside of um, America and Western Europe and make sure that I'm including, you know, um, Asian and South American and African photographers because they're not as often mentioned um, in great photography. And it's really been enjoyable doing that and finding some people on uh, different, different uh, cultures too. That's a beautiful shot. Um, I'd say, you know, Magnum overall, from what I've seen, seems to be pretty representative. They have a number of South American photographers and, and women. And um, I, I think they have Asian photographers as well. I, I don't know who their Asian photographers are off the top of my head. But... Um, uh, I know Bruce Gilden mentioned being highly influenced by the Japanese photographers of like the 60s. So that'd be like Shomei Tomatsu and some of the people like that. Is Matt here? That's Austin. Yeah, she's in the kitchen. Hey, the, oh, you're working. Oh, 
working. That's okay. okay I, guess I'll, I gotta make dinner. Honey. I'm gonna wrap up. Okay. Hey, Nev. So it is time to get ready for dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So I'm gonna wrap up here. Inga Morath, I love her work. I love her story. If you go into my playlist and look under the must know photographers, I'm not even gonna tell you about Inga Morath. Her story is absolutely incredible from you know, escaping you know, Nazi territory to you know, the type of work that she did and who she worked with and saving people's lives, literally. Um, very cool stuff. I would check her out. I love her work. And even some of these, I did a profile on her and I looked through so many of her pictures. I saw this, for, I saw this one. I don't think I saw any, well, I saw this one too. That one, I don't think I've seen. That's a beautiful shot. This one too, I don't think I've seen this either. So it's interesting, there's a lot in here. So, all right, to wrap up here, I'll probably have to do another live. That's interesting. Okay, Helena Johns currently. I'm gonna try to write down Where'd we go? All right, I'm reading these messages before I sign off here. So if I'm quiet for a minute, that's what. Let me look, let me write a couple things down. Uh, who did you say, Alice Austin? And who is the other one? Helena Johns Kirtland. Yeah, that's good. Up Sinclair. I, you know, I honestly, when you look up photographers, I mean, I did a video a while ago, three or four months ago about how I just Googled like great photographers and their, the Google search results showed a list of like 53 photographers and they were all there. Were, there were 53, I think only 11 of them were women. There were no Asian photographers. There were no black photographers. Um, there were, you know, mostly American and Western European. There were a couple Eastern European photographers and there were maybe two or maybe two like South American photographers. And so some of the stuff it, 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 to do some work, um, I was looking for, I wanted to profile some Japanese photographers and I already knew about Daido Moriyama and Shome Tomatsu, um, but I was having a harder time finding some women and I looked around and um, actually, I think I actually asked someone who told me they were Japanese and they said I should look up Aiko Yamazawa. And so I did a profile on Aiko Yamazawa a few months ago and her work is really cool. Again, she has a great story too. Uh, if you go to my must know photographers playlist and scroll down probably about like 10 or 15, she's in there. Um, her, she, again, you know, was in Japan during World War II and she like left, um, you know, the major cities to avoid bombing and, um, you know, made some interesting pictures in the countryside and did, she got into cameraless stuff later in her career, like in the, I want to say the late seventies or early eighties, she started doing cameraless stuff and kind of abandoned the more traditional, um, documentary style photography and did this really modern stuff that was really almost lost. Um, but some curators, you know, found it and, you know, she had a retrospective maybe like in the last five or 10 years of her work. So her stuff is very cool. Um, so yeah. Okay. So again, uh, all right. Wrapping up for real. I'm going to be doing a post for this giveaway. I've got three books. I've got five copies of each book to give away. I'm going to do um, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and my email list, all of which you can get to through the link in my bio. So, um, you know, follow in all those places um, and um, we'll get this giveaway. I'm going to try to put these posts up probably tomorrow. Just something real simple that says, hey, here's the post. I'll pin it. I'll pin it here. So even if you don't see it, if you come back to my account in a few days, check my pinned posts. I don't have any pinned right now. I'm just going to pin the contest post um, so people can find it 
and it'll just be like like and comment and you can get signed up and uh yeah i mean frankly your odds are pretty good because i did a bag giveaway like at the beginning of the year and i couldn't get it pushed out very far so so i think maybe i had like you know 20 people entered to win like a a a bag from uh think tank photo so um if you get into all of those, there's, you got a good shot for this. So, yeah. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. I'm going to post with that, too. So if you don't win one of the books in the giveaway, uh, Thames and Hudson is doing a 20% off coupon code uh, to my people. I think it's like ZDP2022 is the coupon code. So you could use that now. It's active through their website. And that's not just for these books. That's for any of their books. You can get 20% off. They have some incredible books. So I can't believe I almost forgot to say that. (laughs) So um, um, I'll put that in the info with everything too. So if you want to get a different book from them, 20% off for the next, I think like two months. So check it out. Thank you so much for coming by. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking with everybody. Have a great Wherever you're at, morning, evening, night, take care, people.